Hi, following up on the project that we did last week about video shortener, where we were able to download video, YouTube video with its transcripts just using YouTube video ID or YouTube video URL. Today, we're going to split that video into smaller chunks uh, with the given timestamps and also some extra parameters to identify that video file that later we can play on our browser. When it comes to splitting video files on a backend side, of course, there is many video codecs, many video formats, and we, of course, need to keep the proper resolution and video format when we are splitting. There's many variables in actual video file format support. So, of course, we are not going to implement all of those. Instead, we are going to just to use an existing program which is called FFmpeg that probably has the best support of video file formats and also flex flexible command line interface to do the job. Luckily for us there is a library wrapper around FFmpeg for Node.js that we are going to use in our Next.js application. So without further ado let's jump right in. This is the code base from the last part that you can find on a GitHub URL. This essentially is doing downloading video from given video ID or parsing the video ID from a given YouTube video URL. So we have two options and it actually downloads the highest possible resolution with the MP4 format. So what we are going to do now after the download, we have to split this video into multiple chunks depending on what kind of request body we received and what will be the timestamps we had uh, from the request body. So to do that, we actually going to use a library call, called Fluent FFmpeg, which is essentially a wrapper around very famous uh, video library called FFmpeg and that's what we are going to use. First of all, we have to just install this FFmpeg here. I'm gonna just use that from terminal and I'm gonna save this as a dependency. Secondly, depending on your operating system, this step might be different. I'm on a Mac and I'm gonna install the FFmpeg from Brew. So I, I, I have now FFmpeg installed and I have the Fluent FFmpeg library. So what we are going to do is we basically going to code an, another function here, which is which is going to be an asynchronous function. We should receive uh, following parameters uh, saying video splitter. And it should receive the file name which is string. It also have to receive the starting point. Start, which is number. And we have to get also duration. So the way this work is that we are going to split video from giving a start uh, number where an actual that uh, short part of the video should start and the duration how many seconds we want to split for, from this video. Okay, so first of all, we have to import the Fluent FFmpeg by saying FFmpeg from Fluent FFmpeg. So we are actually missing the types here. So uh, Web WebStorm is actually pretty good suggesting there. So I'm going to install the types to make this ESLint error go away. Now we have the FFmpeg and we can get started with an actual implementation here. So see like Git, GitHub Autopilot actually auto-completed most of it. So what we have here is actually file name. The FFmpeg takes the file name. It ac actually identifies the start time and the duration and also all of the uh, codec implementation like video or audio types, they should be resolved in the same way. And we have to also give a resolve parameter here, output file name as a resolve return parameter. So I'm gonna use this as an output file. So I'm gonna save this and we'll respond back with a promise 
of string which should be the file name our response code so that's probably it for this uh, request and of course we also reject an error if there is some error happening after having this video splitter function and because all of the work is done uh, using ffmpeg library we can assume that it should be fine because we don't use that much of api there we have to receive the start and duration parameters from request query so for that i'm gonna use the start and duration request query parameters of course you can set those as a request body but the, for the sake of simplicity i'm using the query parameters here so right now after downloading the transcript and after downloading a video file and before an actual response i'm gonna use the start here as video split file and that should be the file name video file name that we save converted number from the start and converted duration and that should be an actual file format for the splitted file that we have here so after having all of these like simple function as you can see without any extra information it just plain ffmpeg api calls and also the video splitter here that we have we can just safely run this dev implemented uh, API and see how it works so we have here the request which says the video and video ID which is one of the YouTube video IDs I'm gonna set start as the 10 second and duration 5 second so after this it should be able to save a video file requested by us using that duration let's see how request actually performs and see we got back a response and we have also video file with the post fix of uh, duration 5 and the starting point 10 which seems to be correct Let's check if we have an actual correct video file here. I'm gonna quickly open this file in local directory to see if everything is correct. And that's pretty much what we needed. Okay, now that we got everything in place, we actually can split a video with from YouTube ID and the start and duration endpoints as well. So what I'm going to do is actually switch this query parameter to body because ideally we want to receive this request as a body request and we actually want to split video into multiple chunks and not to receive only one start and duration. So for that we have to receive video ID or video URL depending on what we want and also we have to receive the split or chunks let's name that chunks so let's type those in proper to identify as a typescript types so we have a video id and the chunks are going to be types with the start and the duration both of those are numbers there so we have a video id video url strings and the chunks where we have a start and duration as numbers and that should be an array of objects so rest of the code seems to be fine at the moment besides the start and duration we don't have those at the moment instead we have actually chunks so we have to make a promise all where each chunk is should be separated as a start and end parameters here where we should have those like this start and the duration so now we have all of those 
video files here and we can respond with video files variable name as a response body whenever we want to split into multiple chunks here so let's test this out and instead of this url parameters we have to have now the content type application json so in postman you probably have to write a separate things uh, to identify those but here in, in plain requests and this is also available in vs code by default so the http ending of the file makes actually this request very simple and keeps the files inside your repository without moving to some external program so now we have here a request body with video id and i'm gonna name these chunks and each chunk is going to be an object with the start and duration and i'm gonna add for the sake of test a second chunk which is like starting from 20th second i'm gonna take six second clip so ideally we should now have uh, for this video id two clips with the start of 10 seconds and duration five so this video length first one will be five seconds and the second one should be a six second uh, video clip i'm gonna just hit run and test if we actually got back a proper version and take a look logs so we don't have any errors for now okay turned out that when we were sending a request here with the chunks that we needed to split it turns out sometimes when video write stream delays a bit it actually can be that video file is empty while we were trying to split those into separate chunks that's why video files split have to be done whenever this file write stream completes and we have already downloaded the file and we have to move this variable up to keep the context alive until we respond back with the proper variable here and that should be a string array and by default it should be an empty array so this way now we should be able to send a response whenever the video split functionality worked we should be able to also download the file actually when the video download file processed and we got a transcript as well so now when we have everything in place let's hit the run button on the api call again and see how it actually performs this should take some time and as you can see we got back a proper formatted result that we wanted so we have now two video chunks separated from 10 to 5 and from 20 to 6 and we got two separate files in our directory with the proper file uh, chunks and the timestamp formatting it was quite simple implementation and that might even be very simplistic if we take out all those code samples and make make it as a separate function here let's say we can make an asynchronous function making a video download where we give a youtube id as a string or a YouTube URL as a string and actually those should be an options to make things a bit more expressive so now when we have this function argument created let's see if we have this video id and video url i'm just naming variables appropriately for just copying pasting this uh, entire code stack and see if everything is in place now that we have all of these validations i can simply this copy this over and make it as a promise because we are going to respond as a promise and of course we should be able to get the video id from options 
named as video ID and video URL. Those are the variables that we need in general to separate those. And we actually don't need this. We can just say that we can just throw an error like saying invalid video URL. We can just reject saying invalid video URL without having any extra response parameter here. And whenever the event triggered close, we can simply say resolve and that resolve should be a file name, video file name. And that's basically it, what we need to send back to the endpoint. That will simplify things a lot. When we say that we need to download a video, we can just provide a video ID and the rest of the functionality. We don't even need to have as a separate function. So the rest we have here, video file name, which should be a video download with the video ID and video URL. We have a transcript and we should be able to keep this variable alive as well. And the transcript file name actually going to be generated from the, actually we can keep the transcript download as well inside. We don't need extra variables actually here. So we can download the video here and we can download the transcripts as well and then respond with the resolve function here. So we can resolve as a video file name, but before resolving, after having a video, we can just transcript those and we can give a video file name and the transcript file name. Here we will should change also the response video file name, which should be a string and transcript file name, which should be also string. That's basically it. So we have here now video file name and transcript file name in the response and everything works as a separate function without waiting a pipe. So this actually means that the transcripts that we get, it, act, it downloads right after we got a video file and we can here keep it simple saying that transcripts are equal here and we save transcripts right after video download. So if we try again, this should work the same way as we had previously because we essentially just made it a little bit better. So that's basically it. This is the entire code base of having an API endpoint that you can send a separate video ID chunks that you want to split and it will actually split that and return back a file name and also download the transcript that we are going to use later on. So stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe to get more content like this.